Well, good morning, SRPC. Thank you so much for being with us today, both in person and on live stream. We begin a brand new series today called The Journey. We're going to be talking about God's faithfulness to SRPC and what God is inviting us to do and to be as we lean into his future for our lives. So this is a, a very important series, and uh, we look forward to taking this journey together. As we begin, though, today, we want to remind ourselves of God's great faithfulness, of the great things that God has done, not only in our lives personally, but in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we invite you both at home on live stream and here in the sanctuary, would you stand? I'm going to pray for us and then turn it over to Sue Dale and our worship team to lead us in worship. God, we thank you so much that you have indeed done great things. If we just pause for a moment and reflect on our lives, it becomes so obvious. And so, Lord, with gratitude filling our hearts, we commit ourselves afresh to you and this time of worship to you for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the Lord.
Scripture for this series is Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. The following are scriptures for today. Ephesians 4, 1 through 5. We read, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
We also read in 1 John 3, 16 through 18. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is one of those favorite hymns where it talks about us consecrating and giving over every aspect of our, our lives. And as we discuss here as a church just what our church is to do next and what it's going to look like, this is our prayer this morning, is that we can lay everything at his feet.
take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, we have just offered up to you our whole hearts, our, our lives as we know it, God. Our time, our, our intellect, God, our finances. and God, these are such easy words to say. But God, in times like this, you need all of us. You need our focus, God. You need the things that we dwell on, God. The things that we dream about. The things that we spend our time hoping for. Lord, it needs to be wrapped up in you. So God, we just pray that you would be the Lord of our heart's desires. God, and then everything that we say and do would be reflected by your heart. Give us your eyes, God, to see the needs around us. Lord, that scripture says, God, if we are seeing people in need and we are not caring, how can we be called persons of God? How can we claim to be aligned with a God of love. God, if there are people that haven't heard about you and, and we're just so scared about our reputations, we aren't willing to, to evangelize God, then who are we? So God, we just pray for the courage today to be what you need us to be, God, and your spirit in us so that we're not doing it in our own strength, God, but in your strength working through us. So God, that is who we want to be today. Lord, would just be with Mark's words now, and may they hit home, God. We're asking, we're allowing you to hit those deep places in us, God. And we commit this time to you now. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You can have a seat if you like. Let me ask you a question. Have you heard God this morning in some way already? Have, have you experienced his presence? Let's just pause for just a moment and just in your own way, just thank God for how you've already heard him. We haven't even gotten to the sermon yet, but he has been moving. And if you haven't, then just say, God, I'm, I know something's coming. So just pause for a moment and just in your own way, just say, God, thank you for how you've already shown me something this morning. Father, we thank you that you speak in so many ways through your word, through music, and uh, we give you praise because we know that you're continually speaking in different ways. We look forward to what else you have in store. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for that. Well, my name's Mike. I'm one of the pastors here, and uh, welcome to Camp SRPC. Uh, we'll be hearing a little bit more about that, I'm sure, Pastor Mark, uh, so you'll have to wait and see more about that. Hey, just a few things I want to mention before uh, Pastor Mark comes uh, up here this morning. Uh, first of all, I'm hoping that nobody accidentally came here last week because we weren't here. We were at the picnic over at Athens Downs. How many of you made it over to Athens Downs? Awesome. Yeah, we had a sweet time, and just thanks for all who came, and uh, we tried to do something different. We did worship in the park. How was that? Would you do that again? Yeah? Was that okay? And yeah, it was just a great time. We had some catered food, had some fun and games, and it was just so many answered prayers. Uh, again, a special thanks to Sherry Kahn, uh, who is relatively new to this church, and yet she was willing to be a point person for that. And thank you for so many who came alongside her and helped prepare the meals, get them ready to hand out and set up and clean up. Thanks for all the crew that came alongside to make that happen. I can see people pointing, oh, I see that person. I see me. How many of you, when you look at a picture, you first go right to yourself? <laughs> Am I all right? Um, so anyway, special, and also special uh, thanks to Matthew Tripp, who is uh, up there working our sound, and yeah. Some of you may have heard, uh, our morning didn't get off to the best start. Uh, one of the things we need whenever we're doing sound is power. And uh, we thought we had this great setup, we were gonna plug into the bathroom there. That was the best the park said we could do. <laughs> Well, I don't know if someone, what happened in there, but the night before, we lost all the power, and so we got, to, we had no power, and it just so happened there was a man, a staff person, who was walking across, actually to change the flags for 9-11. Normally, they're not always there. Matthew grabbed him, and the guy was so helpful. He totally went out of his way to get us set up, even better than the bathroom, 
and, uh, and got us rolling. But there were a few other things we had to wrestle with, and Matthew just rolled through that, and God provided, right? Thank God that he saw it through in just a beautiful day. Um, hey, two weeks ago, we mentioned to you uh, about, as Julie Keene, our student director, was here sharing about uh, camps and what happened last summer. Some of you saw that video. It was just a really special thing. Here's a, a glimpse of one of those. And uh, it, it was just highlighting the priority that we feel called as a church and as the body of Christ, really, to disciple our young people, to raise up our young people into the Lord. And the camps are a key part of that. And part of that was to, um, to raise some funds for next year's camps because they're getting pretty expensive and we don't want to be the cost to be prohibitive for families and kids who want to come. And so I want to give you an update. Uh, so far, since two Sundays ago, we've raised $1,720. So that's, yeah, we praise God for that. But we'd like to keep going. And um, we're, we're, the target we're looking for is around $5,000. So, just to say, if any of you missed that, or if you'd like to contribute in any way, you can go online, you can use the app that we have, um, or you can just put on a check just to help with the camp's fund. Uh, but again, this will make it possible for us to kind of make it easier for families to do that. And, and this is a powerful thing. As you heard, there were a couple of testimonies, people who came to know the Lord very much because of those camps. So, thanks so much for that. Thanks for who've already given and for those who have the opportunity to do so. So, this is a special season of the year, not just for pumpkin lattes or nice colors as they come out, but it's also building bridges. You can just feel it in the air. So, I'd like to invite up Dave Wilson. Um, he's part of the Building Bridges team, and he's going to share a bit with us. And for those of you um, who don't know about building bridges, you're not literally building little bridges, um, although we probably will if we haven't one day, but it's more about building bridges with our community building bridges through acts of service. We take a day to just go pour out into our community all sorts of ways we can bless and lift up people on October 16th this year. And uh, Dave's part of a team that helps plan for that. So Dave, let me ask you, how many years have you been doing building bridges? I was counting them this morning, Mike, and I think this will be my ninth year. All right. Nice, thank you. And I know you've been on this team for a while. So Dave, tell me, what can uh, we expect or what's happening this year for Building Bridges? Well, this year, um, as we go out in the community to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to serve him, um, we, in, uh, in light of COVID um, and the restrictions, um, we are going to do outside projects this year, outside maintenance, um, small repair projects at the, the various venues. That sounds great. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. And I understand there's going to be a dinner still this year, and we're going to do it outside, right, under a tent. So we can, it'll be really special for those of you who went to, how many of you did the, the Chick-fil-A night we did here? Yeah, so we're going to do, it'll be like that, only building bridges style, but uh, so that's something a little different that'll be fun to do this year as well. So Dave, how can, what do we do now? How can we help be a part of this now? Well, two words, sign up. <laughs> we really need people to sign up sooner rather than later, okay? The, um, the projects that, we're, that we would like to do this year, obviously we, we do the camp parks every year. We do Sunny Glen retirement homes every year. Um, and then, then we, we try to meet the, the most pressing needs in the community for some of our elder shut-ins or widows or, or families with some dire needs. And we can't do that without you folks. And it really helps us if you, soon, if you sign up, like right now. Um, and, and Ed and Diane Thompson, God bless you guys, are going to be out in the lobby afterwards. They'll help you sign up. You can sign up so easily. They can, uh, they can run you through it. Um, you want me to go over how that's done, Mike? Uh, sure. How, how long is that process, Steve? <laughs> go, go for it's, it. it. How long did it take you yesterday? Uh, I just did it while we were talking up here. Yeah. It's, it's, you I'm can do it. it on your phone. You can do it on your computer. Super easy. And Ed and Diane can make it even easier if you need to. Yeah. Just yeah. srpcd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> srpc.org. Um, and, uh, and then... It's under the tab for um, oh events, yeah, gatherings. Events? What's, it's uh, what's happening? 
What's happening? What's That's happening? Okay. What's happening? Building Bridges 2021. Yeah, there you go. And then it'll lead you through. Just you know, put in your email address and go forward. Beautiful. Piece of cake. Even Beautiful. I can do it. There you go, Dave. Thank you so much, and thank you to your team. There's folks that plan months in advance to make this happen. So anyway, tell your friends. Thank you, Dave. I'm gonna uh, pray Thanks, now Mike. for our morning offering. And uh, thank you again for those who contribute to the church. I know some of you do recurring gifts online. Some of you send in things. If you ever want to still bring things and physically bring things to church, we have a box that's at the back there. You're welcome to use that as well. But let me just say a prayer for the gifts that God's given us. Oh, Lord God, we are so blessed. Father, you give us ways to worship you, to offer ourselves to you, Lord. Some of them, as the Bible says, are through acts of service as we get to do through building bridges and hopefully many other ways in our daily lives. God, sometimes it's just through our worship, our singing to you, Lord. We offer our hearts, our souls to you. And Lord, also through the resources you've given us. God, it's one more way, God, we say thank you and that we trust you, Lord, that really you hold all this in your hands. And Father, I do pray, God, even as we hope these will bless others, whether it be youth or people in our community, God, that are in need, whatever way it is, that, Lord, our own hearts, Lord, would be strengthened and encouraged in you too, that our own hearts, our joy, our peace would increase as well. Father, I pray now for Pastor Mark as he gets ready to share with us, God, that you would just move powerfully through this time. Lord, it may be just a, a scripture that we hear that grips our heart, or, or maybe it's a story, or maybe just the whole thing. We're just enwrapped by your Holy Spirit. Well, Lord, I pray, God, you would move with power now as Mark comes and shares with us. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Welcome Thanks, brother. Mike. Yeah. Appreciate uh, your time and your sharing this morning. It kind of almost feels like a little bit more of a normal fall. I mean, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. So thank you for being here today. So glad to see you both uh, in person and also online. We trust that uh, you're having a good worship experience with us as well. Well, today, as I mentioned at the outset, we begin a brand new series, and we're calling the series The Journey. Um, I think, and I don't want to be over dramatic, but I think this is probably one of the, or maybe the most important series that I've ever uh, ventured into since my time here at SRPC. I've been here six years. And because of that, I want to just give you a little bit of a, of a, um, a setup for what we're doing today. Um, last spring, many of you know, we did an all-church survey, and that was a terrific effort that so many of you participated in. In fact, over 70% of our church family participated in that all-church survey. And we learned a lot from you. We learned about how God was moving in your life. We learned about what God was doing here at SRPC, both in you and through you. And that was a very important time for us. And throughout the summer, we have been praying and processing the results of that survey, both as, as a session, our leadership team, and another team that we established, the session established, called the Reimagined Church Team. And we grounded everything that we have been doing over these past few months in a prayer. In fact, we prayed that prayer in church here a couple of times, and I offered that prayer to you on several occasions. We've been praying it on staff. We've been praying it individually. We've been praying it on the Reimagine team. We've been praying it on the session. The prayer is this, Jesus, you're building your church, and I'm available to you. Help me to listen intently. Help me to learn humbly. Help me discern wisely. I want to listen. I want to learn. I want to discern. And so we've been praying that prayer because we want to surrender our agenda. We want to surrender our plans. We want to surrender our ideas to God. And we believe that, that God has in many ways given us some answers to that prayer. And so what we want to do today is we want to begin a series that hopefully over these next several weeks will unpack what we believe God has done to answer that prayer. Now, we're wrapping the, the whole uh, series around a theme called The Journey. And those of you who are worshiping with us live, hopefully as you came in today, you got a carabiner. How many have heard of that word, carabiner? Would you raise your hand? Okay, some of us have heard of that word, carabiner. A carabiner is something that, that climbers use in, in climbing, and it is a really key component to keeping yourself from falling. The carabiner is the thing that attaches you 
to significant anchor points so that you don't fall. A carabiner, the, the bottom line is a carabiner is a connector. And this carabiner says the journey, SRPC, that's what your carabiner says. And what we mean by this carabiner is that we will be our best as a church when we are connected with one another. We want to stay connected. And so it's a gimmick. I'll say it right out of the gate. But it's meant to keep connectedness front and center in our mind. So I would ask that as much as you possibly can, that you stay connected through this series. That if it's possible for you to be here in person, that you be here in person. That if you're unable to be here in person, you watch on SRPC live stream because we want to stay connected throughout this series. That's why the carabiner is here. Now, the stage set. Those of you who are in the room may have seen it. Those who are not in the room, you may have had trouble seeing it. But it is a, a camping setup. And we set this up to basically reflect the, the idea of a base camp. Okay, if you're on an ambitious hike, if you're on a journey, if you're on an adventure, if you're on a climb, base camp is where you gather, base camp is where you make your plans, base camp is where you check your gear, base camp is where you go over the fundamentals, the foundational things for what you're about to do. That all happens at base camp. So for these next two weeks, we're going to be at base camp. And what I mean by that is that we're going to take a look at some things that we believe are foundational to who we are as a church. We call them core values. We're going to take a look at those over the next couple of weeks. And then we are going to move out of base camp and begin our journey together after that. And the journey is going to be around what we have prayerfully discerned and believe God is calling us to in terms of four areas of focus, four areas out of all the things that we can do, four areas that we need to give special and, sig and significant attention to. We, we want to walk into the future, journey into the future that God has to, for us. But today, we start with base camp. We start with those core values, those things that matter most to us at SRPC. And again, these things have come out of what you told us about your experience personally at SRPC and about how you specifically are contributing to SRPC. We didn't just make this stuff up. This is us reflecting back to you what you have told us and done our prayerful best at putting specific words around it. Make sense? Okay, there's five core values all together. Today I'm talking about three. Next week I'm talking about two. And by the way, as always, you can go on to SRPC live stream or you can go on to our website and you can get uh, the sermon notes. They're also in the Saturday updates that we send each week. So core values are, are things, are, are beliefs deeply held among us, deeply held convictions things that we're passionate about here at SRPC. In fact, we will always be about these values. We will always be about these convictions. And each of the values that I'm going to talk about today, each of these core values are absolutely anchored in Scripture. They're anchored in Scripture. So the first value is this, loving generously. Now, if you take a look at the Bible, right from the very beginning, we see God's generous love. In the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, God calls the creation into order. God creates humans. God puts them in relationship with himself and one another. God provides for them a world to thrive in. All of that comes out of nothing because God is generous. God pours his generosity into our lives from the very beginning. And we see that throughout the whole Bible. But in John 3, 16, this is a verse that probably everybody knew or has known at some point in their life. In John 3, 16, God gives us the greatest expression of generosity ever, ever given to the human race. You know the verse. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. How many know that verse or think they kind of remember it? Or have heard? Okay, good. It's, it's sort of one of those deals, right? You saw the guy. Remember the guy back in the day with the uh, rainbow hair that was waving that sign at ball games? Yeah, I don't know if he's still around, but he had John 3.16. We know this verse. Well, God's generous love compels God to show up in the world, in the person of Jesus Christ. When God shows up in the world in Jesus Christ, that is, the Bible tells us, that is God with us. God's generosity means that God is with us. And here at SRPC, love that shows up like that is important to us. It's an important, it's a core value to show up in other people's lives the same way that God showed up in our lives. Here's how we define at SRPC loving generously. We'll put it on the screen for you. Loving generously is passionately demonstrating God's abundant love in practical ways. That's what loving generously is for us as we see it. It's passionately expressing, demonstrating God's abundant love in practical ways. Here's the big question. Do you do that? Do you do that in your life? Do you show up for people in practical ways? I hope so because loving generously matters to us as a church. So here's what I hope about showing up in practical ways. I hope that if you have an older neighbor, that you often ask that neighbor, can I take your garbage can out to the curb for you? If you have an older neighbor, you often ask them, can I bring your mail in for you? What that means, showing up for someone in a practical and loving way, can mean if you have a younger neighbor, you ask them if they need anything when you're going to the store because you're going there anyway. And you know they're chasing kids around all the time and it may be helpful for you to pick something up for them. Loving generously means that I hope you pay attention to the needs of your coworkers and the needs of your golf buddies and the needs of your friends that don't know Jesus because they will see Jesus in part through practical loving, through showing up and loving in practical ways. I hope that, that what's on your radar beginning today is a, is a prayer for people that you know that don't know Jesus. And the prayer is simply this, help me listen to them and help me show up for them. See, when we love generously, we show up for people, especially people that we know that don't know Jesus. Because you know what? At one point, we didn't either. And God showed up for us. Loving generously, we show up for people. That matters to us at SRPC. It will always matter. That's what we're about. It's a core value. Second core value is growing relationships. Again, this value is anchored in scripture. And if you were with us during the worship set, you heard Mike um, Sharman read that for us. But it's from Ephesians chapter four. Let me read that again for you. This is about growing in relationships and it's anchored in scripture. Paul writes this, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There's one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Here's the quick background on Ephesus. Paul's writing this letter to believers who were in this great ancient city called Ephesus. The good news is the gospel of Jesus Christ had taken hold in Ephesus. The hard thing is that Ephesus was an incredible melting pot of people. People were different, and the gospel was winning over people who were different. They were different politically. They were different economically. They were different socially. They were different racially. It was a mash of different kinds of people. And the gospel was winning them over. So here you come with this whole mash of people and I believe in Jesus and you believe in Jesus but you have these weird traditions and you believe things that I've never even thought of and you do things in ways and you 
you, there's all kinds of differences, right? And the gospel's taking hold there, and they had to work out their faith, <laughs> here's the key, with real people. Isn't faith great when all you have to do is work it out with yourself? <laughs> but man, when you have to work it out with actual people, what a pain that is, right? Hey, you know what? That's not new news. That was happening in Ephesus. And so Paul writes there, he says, listen, here's what you do in those kinds of difficult relationships. You're humble, you're gentle, you're patient, you bear with each other, right? You can do that with yourself. Hard to do that with people that are different than you. Paul says, be humble, be gentle, be patient, bear with each other. And then he drops this bomb. Here it is. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. What a bomb he drops there. Every effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You know what that means? <laughs> Paul says that you ought to work hardest at loving people that are most different than you. I want to say that again. You ought to work hardest at loving people that are most different than you, especially in the family of faith. Paul says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So for us here at SRPC, what does it mean to grow in relationships, to be in growing relationships? That's a core value. It means this, building authentic, loving, and trusting connections with God and with each other. With God and with each other. Let me ask you this. Has that been your experience at SRPC? Well, I hope so. I, I hope that many of you have sat in growth groups and had conversations with each other in growth groups about things that you see very differently on. And you feel the angst and you feel that tension. You go, wow, how do I love a person that sees something so different than me? I hope you've had that experience. I hope you've had the experience of sitting in worship today and looking maybe across the room and seeing something, someone and going, oh man, I, I need to find that person after church today and, and go up and ask for their forgiveness. <laughs> because just now as I looked over to them, I, I realized that I said or did something that probably tweaked them a little bit. And I want to make it right. I hope that at SRPC, one of your experiences has been this, that when you have been in conflict with someone, and guess what, it happens. When you've been in conflict with someone, you've done the hard work of resolving conflict with a, a brother or sister in Christ. I hope that in this church, you have literally prayed with someone who voted different than you. I hope that's happened. Because you know what? That's making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Jesus is bigger than all of those details. And what matters most to us is living as if that's really true and doing things that show that it matters to us. The gospel of Jesus Christ compels us to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The final core value that we'll talk about today is this. Embracing service. Again, it, embracing service is all over Scripture. But I want to look specifically at 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 and 18. This is the same John that we read from, John 3.16 3, on. This is what John says as a sage, as an old, wise follower of Jesus. Here's what he writes in 1 John chapter 3. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Dear children, writes John, let us not love with words and speech, but with actions and in truth. John says this, we really don't know what love is if all we do is talk about it. If all we do is talk about love, talk about love, talk about love, we don't really know what love is. Love does. Love 
does. That's what John is saying. It's action-oriented. So we have said that embracing service is a core value for us. And what that looks like for us here at SRPC is compassionately serving the faith and the life needs of our community. Not just these of us, those of us here in our church family, but our community, San Ramon and the San Ramon Valley and even beyond that, especially the underserved, especially the underserved. That means our hands get dirty sometimes. Our lives get inconvenienced sometimes for the sake of other people. That's what embracing service is. And so here's my question. Have you done that here at SRPC? Has that been a part of your experience at SRPC? I, I hope that you've had this experience as I have. It's so powerful. I hope that you've prayed at a Building Bridges site for and maybe even with the person or family that you're going to serve and then done the work at that home. I hope you've brought school supplies and help fill backpacks for Shepherd's Gate in Livermore, which ministers to, to moms and kids who are fleeing domestic violence. I hope you've given blood through our Red Cross blood drives. I hope you've given gifts at Christmas through Angel Tree, and maybe even some of you have been in the homes of those that you're bringing gifts to and shared the Christmas story and prayed with those families. I hope you've walked for kids and for families, raising money for clean water in Ghana, a half a world away. You see, we embrace service because the Bible says we don't just love with words and speech. We love with action and in truth. Love does. Those are three values. We love generously. We're committed to growing relationships. And we embrace service. This is base camp. And the climb is going to begin in a couple of weeks, but we just want to make sure that we all understand what it's about today and next week. Now, for those of you that are working with an outline, you've got a, a benefit here because every week we're going to talk about a next step. Those of you who are in the room, I'm just going to trust you to remember what I'm saying next because this is your next step. Every single week there's going to be a next step for us to take, right? And I've framed it up pretty easy this week with sort of the idea of three, two, one. But the next step I I is this. The, the next step will make a difference for you, for me, between talking about something and actually doing it, right? When, when you do these next steps, you, you take it to the level of your life, not just have it stick in your head. These next steps are not just busy work. Because what God wants for us so deeply is not just to hear his words, but to put them into action. That's what the next steps are about. In fact, the Bible <laughs> says this in so many places, but let me remind you what James 1.22 says. It says this, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Don't just listen, do it. That's what these next steps are about. They're about doing something with what you've heard. So for about the last month or so, I've been going to physical therapy. I had a forearm thing that went on, and, and, and so I go to physical therapy, right? I go in and I meet with my physical therapist, Russ. He's a great guy. And Russ has me, asks me a bunch of questions and has me go through a bunch of motions and does the whole massage thing on the forearm and gives me some exercises. And it's really good when I'm with Russ, right? And, and I've, I've figured this out. I've been doing this for about five weeks now. I figured this out. It goes best for me when I really do what Russ says in between <laughs> my meetings. How many would say amen to that? Amen, right? But here's the thing that Russ does. Russ sends me a text message 
with pictures of the exercise and description. So when I started this out of the gate, I looked at those pictures. I thought, man, those are pretty cool pictures. I read the descriptions. I thought, oh, those are good descriptions. I even watched YouTube videos about these exercises. But you know what? It didn't work because I didn't do it, right? I find, I don't know how you, I find that I make the best progress when I actually do something with what I know. <laughs> how many would say amen to that? Amen? Okay. Next step is doing something with what you know. And this is about a whole lot more than getting your forearm back. This is about getting your life in step with Jesus, with God's dreams and desires for your life. So, here's next steps. Three, two, one. Three, pray for three people you know who don't know Jesus. Pray for three people you, don't, you know who don't know Jesus. Now, these people could be neighbors. They could be friends. They could be coworkers. They could be golf buddies. They could be family members. Pray for three people you know that don't know Jesus. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, what do I pray? How do I pray? What do I, what do I, here's the prayer. One sentence, right? Here it is. Lord, help me listen to them and show up for them. That's the prayer. Help me listen to them and show up for them. Three people you know that don't know Jesus. Lord, help me listen to them and show up for them. If you do that, I, God loves to answer that prayer. You know there's some prayers you pray, Lord, I want a Maserati. God's like, ah, I don't think so. When you pray this prayer, God can't wait to answer that prayer. I'm telling you, God will bring someone to mind. God will bring someone in your path that you know that doesn't know him, that has a need, and you can show up for them. God will love to answer that prayer. Three people you know that don't know Jesus, Lord, help me listen to them and show up for them. That's three. Two, two, connect with someone that you have a difference with. This is hard, right? But when I read that scripture a few minutes ago, right, the scripture that said, make every effort to keep unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, someone came to your mind, at least for some of you. That wasn't breakfast talking. That was the Holy Spirit. When I read the words of Scripture, make every effort to keep unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, and that someone came to mind for you, that was the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was saying, you need to pay attention to that relationship now. Now. Two people that you need to make it right with or make it better with. One probably just came to your mind. Another one may come to your mind some other time. That's the next step. As followers of Jesus, listen, we ought to work hardest at peace and unity with people who are different than we are. That's the gospel. And that's how we live. Three, two, one. One is this. Find a way to serve this week. Because you know what? Love does. We don't just talk about love with words. We do. We do love. Get your hands dirty and get your life a little bit inconvenienced for the sake of someone else. Maybe that means signing up today, today for building bridges. Maybe it means paying special attention to a need that you've been made aware of recently that you know you can do something about, but, oh, man, it's going to take some time you know, I might have to get my hands dirty a little bit. Find one way to serve this week. Base camp, that's where we are today. At base camp, we remember what matters most because it's going to set us up for everything that is to come. And at base camp, we stay connected. One of the best ways that you can stay connected, that we can stay connected this week, is to have that same experience of a next step. Pray for three. Make it right with two. 
serve one. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your word today. And we're keenly aware that you held nothing back from us in Jesus Christ. That your life was generous to the point of death on a cross. That from beginning to end, reconciliation, making relationship right was your agenda. And in Jesus Christ, you were more than inconvenienced. You served your whole life up for us. So God, we pray that you would stir in us, that you would move in us, that you would compel us to do the same, to do what you would do. We want to be more like Jesus. And we want it to start today. So we ask for your help because we can't do it without you and we want to do it with each other. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're gonna close today with a song called Christ Be Magnified. And the whole theme of this song is is living our lives in such a way that, that people see Jesus through us. Would you stand here in our sanctuary and even at home as we commit ourselves more fully to the Lord and ask Jesus Christ to be magnified in our lives. Let's worship. If it puts me in the fire, I'll read.
rejoice cause you're there too I won't be formed by feelings I'll hold fast to what is true if the cross brings transformation I'll be crucified with you cause death is just the doorway into resurrection life if I join you in your sufferings I then I'll join you a couple things before uh, Pastor Mark just our benediction. Uh, one of the things Pastor Mark mentioned was the importance of being connected. And uh, one of the key ways that happens is in smaller groups of people. And we call them growth groups in this church. And uh, many of you are in those and can share about that. But we know there's others that um, maybe you haven't had that blessing yet. And so we're going to provide that opportunity. Uh, Katie McConville, where are you? Katie's here. You might have seen her on the email. She's the one that can help you learn more about what we're going to start this fall. We're aiming now for mid-October, and these are going to be some groups that we're going to start for a season. They'll meet every other week. But if you're not in one, um, hopefully you've heard that nudge this morning that maybe this is the time to get connected in this season. I know we're all busy, and anyone that's in a growth group will probably tell you they were, they're busy too, but how important that has been in their lives. So again, Katie will be around afterwards. Also, where's Julie Keene? Are you here, Julie? Julie's right here, so if you want to talk about camp scholarships, good person to talk to or just hear about all the great things God's doing th with our students in student ministry. And Ed and Diane, I think, are, do they already take their spots? Okay, yeah, did. so you'll see them out there building bridges, answer all your questions, get you signed up. And uh, please stay um, after Mark does the benediction for just a few minutes. We want to share some important information from our session on the life of our church. Pastor Mark. Yeah, great. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, appreciate that. Again, if you would mind, uh, if you wouldn't mind just staying around for a couple minutes, that would be that would be great. We're going to take about a two-minute break, so you just can get kind of resituated between the end of the service and the beginning of a very brief informational meeting we want to tell you about. And those of you on live stream too, uh, same deal. There'll be about a two-minute break. You'll see a slide come up, but then we'll be back in about two minutes with some important information. But I pray that as we've begun the journey today, and as we've hung out a little bit at base camp, you have a deeper understanding of our core values, what matters most to us as a church. And this is just the beginning of a journey that we're going to be taking together. And we're praying that all along the journey, God would strengthen and equip us to be and to become who he's called us to be. God bless you and have an awesome week. Amen.